everyone, it's Tracy. I'm starting to lose the light, but I wanted to do this very quickly. I got this new Oracle deck called the Wisdom of Tao, Oracle cards, 45 cards and a guidebook. And I didn't know it was coming. I had seen it on, a, on one of Amber's preview videos, but I, I just kind of stumbled across it. I didn't realize it was a new release. And this picture on the cover, I just thought was so beautiful. Right now, I'm definitely being drawn towards Eastern philosophies. So I thought this would be a, a great deck to add to my collection. It was advertised as a U.S. Games deck, but U.S. Games is nowhere on any of this material. So I suspect I have a version that's not a U.S. Games version because U.S. Games would never, U.S. Games systems, U.S. Games systems would never put out a deck with cardstock that's this bad. So I wanted to, to, sh to share this deck with you because the artwork is beautiful, but there are some definite problems with this deck. It has a really nice box that opens up like this. I don't know if there, there might be a magnet. No, there's no magnet. There might be a magnet. I don't know. doesn't matter. But it comes with a guidebook and these cards. And the cards have quite a bit of, you know, this, it's an Oracle deck. They've got quite a bit of text on them. So it has new beginnings. It has the, the person, the deity, the god, goddess, whoever is being depicted, and then a little paragraph of what this card's about. The problems with this deck are the artwork is gorgeous. I love, love this artwork. It's ugh, stunning. The deck is in a specific order. I haven't taken it out of order. I haven't tried to shuffle it yet but it is not in alphabetical order. There are no numbers on the cards unless that's what these are, and I don't read Chinese, so I don't, I can't use those as numbers. If they are numbers, if someone here knows how to read Chinese and those are numbers or what those mean, please, please tell me. Here, I'll, uh, there's one right there. Well, what does that character mean? Or does it just mean the same as, as some of the words over here? A nice little chunky guidebook that goes into a good bit about each of the cards. But you can see this is published by China Books and Periodicals in San Francisco, California. Trademark is in 2015. So I really feel like if I could get my hands on one of the true U.S. games decks, I'd be more, I'd be happier. And then you have the introduction about the author, how to use, and then the guidance. And they do have, they have numbers next to them. I believe these are the page numbers. So if I go to page 31, yeah, then I start with the new beginnings. So those are the page numbers for each of the cards. You have spiritual guidance, you have elements, you have zodiac. And the zodiac, if you know the Chinese zodiac, it made absolute sense. Yes, that's the Chinese zodiac. Talks about the levels, card meanings, knowing, but it has the same problem as the Connected and Free Oracle does in that, yes, these cards and these descriptions are in the same order, but once you shuffled everything, you are, unless you know the order that these are in, you are never going to be able to find the card, in, the card meanings in the book again because there is no logical order. I'm not going to give this deck up. This was a pretty expensive deck. This was, I believe, about $25. So I'm not going to try to pass it off on somebody, but before I shuffle it and get them out of order, I'm going to put numbers on these cards with a Sharpie so that I know that New Beginnings is one, Manifestation is two, Compassion is three, Abundance is four, because you just, you can't go by the, the order. And then I have to talk about the cardstock because while yes, I am a cardstock, a bit of a, I'm a bit picky about my cardstock. The cardstock on these cards is worse than the Tarot of Transformation. It is so thin and flimsy. I am going to take that and I'm going to rip that in half before you know it. It's just, it bends and it stays bent and it's, it is just horrible, horrible cardstock. That being said, let's just, I'm going to pick one out of the middle and read from the, and you can see, look at that. Look at that cut edge. That's just, that's just sloppy, sloppy quality. 
and it has the name of the deck on the back, which I'm not real fond of that either. Um, I can live with that, but the, the quality of this cardstock is just so bad. So I'm really hoping that if US Games, is actu US Games Systems is actually republishing it, they'll do it to their quality standards and won't be passing off this, this bad quality stuff on us, especially for $25 to $27 a pop. I'm going to actually pick one intentionally because there was a particular bit of artwork that absolutely enthralled me and I thought was gorgeous. It's what got me to buy the deck. It was this one. Yeah, it was this one. I think it was this one. It might not have been. I saw several images beforehand. Ah, it was that one. It was the moon. The moon card. I mean, she's gorgeous. She's absolutely gorgeous. And it says moon, and it has a name there, and I'm not going to try to pronounce it. You are wandering between a jubilant world of reality and fantasy. All is not as it seems. Embrace sensuality and sensitivity that the current energy brings. The heightened emotions may not be stable, so avoid making big decisions at this time. But let's see if I can find that card and read the rest of it out of the book. I don't know which card that was. Oh, let's look in the table of contents. That might make it easier. The moon, the moon, the moon. The moon is page 99. So yeah, okay. Well, yes, that will make it easier to find them. Still not great, but it will make it easier to find them. 99. Okay, here's what it says in the book. This is the time when external forces incite things hidden in your subconscious like a tide pushing suppressed emotions to the surface. Your intuition is at its highest and it bodes well to embrace it. The great energy of intuition has surfaced. Everyone has intuition. Some deny it, some fail to recognize it, but everyone can excite it. Trust your creativity and use your imagination well. Chang Air is also about passion. The fire energy of love blending with the water energy of the moon not only promotes the emotion of happiness and the awareness of sexuality, it also levitates you to a heightened state of goodness. Yet it can also ex suggest a confusing time. The moon empowers the unknown, and anything unknown includes fear. Work to differentiate between illusion and reality. Don't make any decisions when your mind is cloudy. Walk the middle ground to avoid drastic decisions that can lead to irreversible mistakes. Anything, either good or bad, can happen. Through your dreams, meditation, and psychic expression, you should reflect internally to work with those hidden emotions. Dive into the mystery inside you and use this unusual time to your advantage. Realize that what you really want and enjoy <clears throat> realize what you really want and enjoy the feeling of nothingness. Encountering the card of Chang Air is also a sign of love and romance as well as artistic expression. It's a great time to create. Boy, that card means a lot of different things. Background. Chang Air was a beautiful palace maid in the mortal world. Life was normal for her until one day, ten suns suddenly emerged to scorch the earth, making it so hot that life was unbearable. The king frantically searched for a solution. A young hero named Hui Yi appeared with a bow and arrow, appeared with bow and arrow and shot down nine suns. For his reward, he asked Chang for for his reward, he asked for Chang Air's hand in marriage. The king agreed, and the new couple lived happily together for some years. Then one day during a full moon, a mysterious old man gave Hoi Yi an elixir that would make him immortal. He was unsure whether he could leave his wife behind, so he left the elixir under the pillow, instructing Chang Air not to touch the liquid of immortality. It was not something to be taken lightly. Yet Chang Air loved her life with Hoi Yi so much that she wanted to live forever. For the same reason that Hoi Yi did not take the elixir, Chang Air swallowed it without thinking. She instantly began to levitate. She tried to hold on to something but only managed to grab her pet rabbit. She rose to the moon and has been there ever since. She is considered to be the guardian of the moon and its powers. Today, during the Autumn Moon Festival, people use lanterns to light up the earth so that Chang Air can see them and eat mooncakes in honor of her. 
But I do love the, the, the story behind that. So the cards are beautiful. The artwork's beautiful. I like the messages. And if you'll see as we get to the, to the last sets of cards. Earth, okay, so it starts right here. So we start with the, the Chinese zodiac here. We have the rat, the ox, the tiger, the rabbit, the dragon, the snake, I'm year of the snake, the horse, the goat, the monkey, the rooster, that's a beautiful card, I love the artwork, the dog, and the pig. So there you have it, my brief rant about the wisdom of Tao cards. Um, I really, if, if the card stock had been there, been up there, and if these cards had been numbered, I think it would be just a lovely, lovely deck. Um, but I am definitely, I'm going to number them before I shuffle them. So thank you for watching and have a great day.